in College Station right now, passing through on the way down to Navasota to pick up my next set of bees. I've got three packages ordered, plus I've got an additional three queens that I'm going to use to requeen some of the hives I've currently got. So we're on the way down to Navasota, about a half hour, 45 minutes away. The first thing you notice when you arrive at the Bee Weaver bee processing facility is that a lot of the workers are not even wearing protective gear. The man up on the loading dock there is the owner of the place and he's wandering around without even a veil on, dipping bees out of one box to put them into the nucleus boxes. There's bees swarming around all over the place there, but nobody seems to care too much. Now Bee Weaver has started using a new kind of shipping box. Instead of the old wooden box with the screen, they're now using a plastic shipping container called the Bee Bus. And this is uh, designed to ship bees. They're designed to be stacked, to be slid together so that you can couple a bunch of of these boxes together. They just slide apart. They've got a little cover on the top that seals in the round syrup can and the queen cage and then the bars on the box itself are designed to prevent any bees from getting out. I actually stored three of these in the laundry room inside my house overnight and not a single bee escaped. They also still sell the little queen cages with the candy stopper. So out at the ranch I have built a new hive stand and I've put three new hives on there with bottom boards and beetle baffles which I'll describe in a little bit. You just basically take the shipping container, knock one of them off and separate it from the others and then I've been reading one of the experts named Michael Bush has got a lot of real common sense on beekeeping and one of the things he says is why in the world do you want to soak your bees in sugar syrup before you install them doesn't make a lot of sense it ends up drowning the bees more than anything else and then today out here it was about 55 degrees and I really didn't want to chill the bees so I thought I would listen to his advice and not soak my bees in sugar <laughs> syrup and just see what happens. So I removed the little queen cage and they've got some little s slots down there so that the queen pheromone can sink down into the package of bees. So they're already pretty familiar with her scent. The way the box is designed, they don't have to put any attendant bees inside the little queen cage because she has access to the, the whole box worth of bees down there to keep her fed. So I just basically decided to not spray the whole box with sugar syrup, but just remove the sugar syrup can that's been used to feed them for the last 24 or 36 hours or so. Shake the remaining bees off of that and then I will put that can out where the bees can access it a little bit later on if they want to go out into the yard and look for syrup. And then I took the shipping box and wrapped it on the ground good and hard to shake all the bees down to the bottom and then it's basically a process of same thing you would do if you're trying to get a guitar pick out of a guitar you just shake the box back and forth this way and then shake it that way keep sliding more and more bees out now when I did this last year I had soaked the bees in sugar syrup with a spray bottle and really I didn't find any difference at all in their behavior. They basically just all shake down to the bottom of the hive and stay down there. You've got a few that fly around, but 
they were not aggressive at all at this point. So I think that's probably a, a good solution for keeping bees from drowning. So then I removed the cork stopper from the candy end and then I realized that well if these if these bees have already smelled this queen for a long time there's no reason to wait so I went ahead and pulled the cork out of the other end leaving an open hole for the queen to crawl out of the cage and then I held it down there and was kinda of hoping she would fall out through the hole but she kept hanging on so after a short time I decided well I'll just place the queen cage down at the bottom and uh, let her be surrounded by the bees and maybe in a couple of days she'll finally decide to crawl out but meanwhile I need to go ahead and close this hive up so I just set it down there and then put the rest of the frames in so the hole is on the side so she can crawl in and out and the bees should be used to her scent having had her cage in the top of the shipping box for over 24 hours now. So I had removed four frames from the 10 frame hive at the beginning to make room for the bees to be shaken in and I put those four frames back. Now I'm also using a new Man Lake syrup feeder that sits on top and it'll hold around three maybe three and a half gallons of sugar syrup split into two halves and there's a center island that the bees can climb up through um, from below and then that island is screened off so that the bees can't go wandering out into the sugar syrup ponds and pr should prevent a lot of drowned bees and the liner is a one-piece plastic liner so this should prevent the leakage that I've seen before in my wooden top feeder I've also got a new top cover made by Be Smart Designs. It's a insulated plastic cover with an inside airspace and then it's got small ventilation slots that allows moisture to escape and ventilating air to come in. Put an entrance reducer on the front to limit the access from outside critters that might be trying to come in and rob the new hive until it gets a chance to build up some strength and develop some protective instincts. Each one of these three new hives has a thing called a beetle baffle that I obtained from Country Rubes and it's designed on the principle that uh, small hive beetles that try to climb up from outside get inside the hive and try to climb up the walls will be prevented from doing so and they will fall down into through the screened bottom board and into an oil pan 
and as bees chase these hive beetles around inside the hive they will also fall down through that screen bottom board as will any varroa mites and they will all end up in the oil pan below and then it's got slots on the outside that you can remove the oil pan and get rid of that stuff. Now in the second hive, I went ahead and pulled the staple out of the queen cage and opened up the screen and just dumped the queen right into the bunch of bees. Once again, since she had spent the last at least 24 hours with her pheromone drifting around that particular bunch of bees, I felt it was safe to just go ahead and put her in there. Again, this was a piece of advice that I read on Michael Bush's excellent website. Walking around. And then put the four frames back in, allowed the bees to move around underneath there to get out of the way of the frames and then they'll start working their way up the frames and start building comb as soon as I put the feeder on there and fill it with sugar water and give them something that they can use to produce wax and then start building comb. Now you can tell this third beehive is made with a different kind of wood. It's actually a blemish discounted hive box that I got from Country Rubes and they're making a new line of beehive equipment that is dipped in paraffin and tree rosin so that it does not need to be painted. In fact, it really can't be painted because of the coating that's on it now. They, they boil the wood in the paraffin and tree rosin so it makes a nice waterproof box that does not have to be painted. I've always hated the look of the painted There's chipped and cracked and peeling paint on beehives and didn't really relish the idea of being a carpenter and a painter. I want to um, have equipment that doesn't require a lot of care and maintenance so my first two hives were made of western red cedar and uh, I'm going to give this one a try now and see how well the paraffin and tree rosin works.
So after the hives are all put together, I'm going to put these bee bus shipping containers on top of the hive so that whatever bees are still left inside there can wander out and crawl down and find the entrance overnight so that um, they won't die. And the, each of the entrances is sealed off with an entrance reducer that reduces down to one small hole the space that can be used to come in and out of the hive and that will help these hives develop up a little bit of strength and protection before they have to start defending themselves against yellow jackets and wasps and things like that.